Are you okay? Yeah, I don't know how to stop these things. Oh. Well, maybe you should learn. Especially if you're gonna eat ice cream while you skate. I, I can't believe I did that. I am so embarrassed. It's okay. But uh, your sh your shirt. Oh gosh. It's all right. I'll I'll just wash it. I'll wash it. You know, I'd offer to do it for you, but there's probably a pretty good chance that I'd turn it pink. Well, then I'll pass. <laughs> wow. Huh. Men's school, huh? Columbia. Wow, you gotta be pretty smart for that. A genius, but don't tell anybody. And uh, here I come, interrupting your work. Maybe it's fate's way of telling me I need to take a study break. Well, you know, I feel like such a klutz. You look pretty good until you hit that crack. Oh, yeah? You were watching me, huh? Yeah, well, I was thinking I might learn to roll away myself someday. Oh, yeah? Well, why don't you give me your number? Yeah? I'll uh, give you a lesson since you won't let me wash your shirt. Got a pen? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, you're on. All right. What's your name? Danielle. That's a pretty name. What's yours? Jake. Okay, Jake. Well... I look forward to hearing from you. Okay. I'll, I'll talk to you soon then, yeah? Yeah, and um, I'll have you blading in uh, no time. But you're going to have to teach yourself to stop. Nice guy. Ah, what an actress. You even sound as if you like him. Well, is that okay? Is that okay? It's fine. It's great. I want you to use that. Set the hook now and then reel him in slowly. Look, nothing's gonna happen to him, right? Everything will be okay? Danielle, sweetheart. Nothing bad is going to happen to anybody. from the Port Charles Herald. Oh, gee. Do you have a pen this time? Collins, Victor, condition good. In for observation. Scanlon, Frank, condition fair. Overnight observation. Collins, Kevin, condition serious. Scheduled for surgery. Thank you ever so much. Well, poor, poor Dr. Collins. Do feel better soon. But it looks as if I'll have to occupy Miss Coe's attention while you're indisposed. Which could be fun. <clears throat> but it was just a bump on his head. The CT showed that Kevin is suffering from a subdural hematoma. There is bleeding into the tissue surrounding the brain, and we have to stop it. Oh, my God. Thank goodness you're coming, too, Kevin. Kevin is going to get Victor out. No, Doc, it's okay. Victor. It's okay, you got Victor out. He's fine. You're a hero. Now, listen, no, don't go back to sleep. You have to wake up, okay? They want to operate on you, but, but now that you're awake, they don't have to do that, right? Doc, tell him you're fine, okay? Doc, tell him you're fine. You are fine, aren't you? I'm sorry, Dr. Devlin. It, it was an accident. Neither coffee or clumsy interns belong in an ER. It won't happen again. You're the one who couldn't give me Hesselbach's triangle. I can give it to you now. Dr. Wexler, word of advice, pretty smile, won't help you in surgery. Hey, who the hell do you think you're speaking to? Take your hand off me! All right, then you start treating Dr. Wexler like a human being. Who are you? I'm someone that knows a jerk when he sees Scott, one. Scott, please. Let me ask you something, all right? When you pick on young women, does it make you feel like a big shot? Do you know this person? He's my father. <laughs> well, that explains a lot. What is that supposed to mean? Well, um, 
You know, I'm, I gotta go. I think a strategic <clears throat> retreat's called for. Yeah, I have a patient to attend to. Excuse me. I'll call you later, okay? Good floor show. The best. You always fight your daughter's battles for her. Please don't make this into an emotional issue. Kevin is in urgent need of an operation. Well, it's just that brain surgery is extremely dangerous. And now that he has regained consciousness, doesn't that mean he's getting a lot better? What's wrong, Ellen? It's a subdural hematoma. Then I'll operate. Dr. Smitty, no. The sooner they do, the better the chance I won't have permanent damage. Don't say that. Don't even think it. I placed a call to Tony Jones. I, I would trust him with my life. I would, Doc, did you hear that Tony can operate on you? That'd be good. Actually, I just heard um, Dr. Jones is, is not available. What? Yeah, he's been in surgery for five hours. There's no telling when he's going to get out. Uh, call and get me a list of available surgeons. Call Mercy, too. No, don't call Mercy. That place is second rate. But what about flying somebody in from John Hopkins or, or the Mayo Clinic? Cedar Lucy, Sinai, Lucy, even. Lucy, there isn't time. But I want the best for him. Joe Scanlon's done this kind of thing. Anybody have a power drill? Actually, there is a doctor outside. Dr. Bennett Devlin is arguing with Scott. I've, I've heard of him. Isn't he supposed to be very good? He technically is not on staff. Forget the technicalities. I, I'm going to get him. Tuck, I'll, I'll, I'll get him. What you've done. Jake. What are you doing here? Rex said if I didn't help him, he was gonna find you and kill you. I thought if I left, he'd give it up. He's not gonna give up. The guy's like the Terminator. I think I found a way to stop him. You cannot go up against Rex. You do not understand what you are dealing with. When Rex wants something, no one, do you hear me? No one can stop him. I don't know what kind of work you do, Mr. Wexler. It's Baldwin. I see. But in the medical profession, it doesn't help when daddy interferes. Since when? Well, in the real world, big shot surgeons who pick on overworked, stressed out interns are jerks. Well, you know who I am. Yes, I do. But I gotta tell you, what I've heard hasn't been very complimentary. Your daughter been complaining about me behind my back? Oh, no, no, she would never do that. She's a trooper, but you know, I get around a little bit and... What I saw could get someone in some big legal troubles. That's what uh, we lawyers thrive on. Yeah, should have guessed. Yeah, you know, I got a briefcase and everything, and I am just itching to get back into the courtroom. You're threatening me. No, I am warning you. You watch the way you treat people around here. You got that? What was that? That was an incredibly gallant man coming to his daughter's defense. Please tell me you weren't just in the face of the Dr. Devlin. Dr. Jerk Devlin. Sometimes you just need to learn to keep your big fat stupid mouth shut, what okay? Are you, what are you talking shut. about? Excuse me, uh, Dr. Devlin, I desperately need your help. And you are? I am Lucy Coe. Miss Coe. You a friend of his? I've been working on a plan. What is it? You don't trust me. Jake, why did you track me down then? Huh? Because I need you to pull this off. What? If this works, you don't have to hide from Rex anymore. Look, you don't have to worry about me. I know how to disappear. This isn't the first time that I've run away. And you can't run away. I need you in Port Charles. Jake, you told me you never wanted to see me again. You don't trust me, and now you need me? What's, what is going on? I decided Rex isn't going to get away with any more of his crap. I decide I'm sick of being threatened. I also decide you can't love somebody that you don't trust. That doesn't mean you let them twist in the wind. I know that you can't forget all my lies. Danielle, you know, you keep telling me how sorry you are. But you did every rotten little thing Rex asked you to do. You're right. Why? Huh? I need to know why and I need to know how. I need to know it all so I can do the exact same thing to Rex. All right. You said he found you after your mother died. Is that the truth? It's so 
complicated. You wouldn't even understand who I used to be, and I don't know if you're ready to hear it. I'm ready to hear it, if it's the truth. Yes, actually, that person and I are acquainted remotely. Uh, listen, Dr. Devlin, my fiancé, Dr. Kevin Collins, has been in a terrible accident, and he has a subdural hematoma. He needs an operation. Since when? Later. You seem to be the only person able to do that right now. Wait a minute, what about Tony? Tony is very busy. Listen, Dr. Devlin, Dr. Burgess tells me that you are the absolute best, so I'm begging you for your help. If, if I were to lose Kevin, I don't think I could live without him. Please, I am begging you, please do this, please. Lucy, I don't think this is a good idea. Excuse me. If you're implying that I'd let emotion color a medical decision, you're an even bigger fool than I thought. Listen, whatever your fee is, we can pay it. I'm not worried about money. You'll do it? Uh, of course. Thank you. I, I need to talk to the admitting doctor and get up to speed on your fiance's condition. Oh, right. Uh, he has a bump on, on, the, on the back of his head, and he's bleeding internally. You know, he did lose consciousness uh, for a minute. I know that's important. Lucy, I'll take it from here. Right. She found you. Yes? It's a subdural hematoma requiring a craniotomy. I'll examine Dr. Collins, take a look at the CT scan report, get Boardman to assess. Right. Uh, I'd like the surgical intern on duty to be able to observe. Who have you got? Dr. Wexler. Wexler. It's an excellent opportunity for her. All right. <sighs> oh, thank God. Yeah, well, he thinks he's God. Scott, listen, I don't care if he whips up his shirt and pounds on his chest in surgery as long as he helps Kevin, okay? Well, that ought to make for interesting surgery. Just stop. Just leave him alone. All that is important now is for that man to get Kevin through this operation. Ladies? Ooh, what happened? You couldn't find a clean lab coat? Well, Chris, when I find time to eat, sleep, and go to the bathroom, not necessarily in that order, I will find a clean lab coat. Thank you. Mm -mm. Interns are supposed to look presentable at all times. Oh, would you lighten up? Why don't you go wax Devlin's car or something? You know, I noticed your pom-poms came out when Devlin's treatment of women was debated. Is that a sore spot with you, Eve? Well, with me and every other woman who's ever trained to be a doctor. Uh-oh, here comes the feminist rhetoric. Dr. Burgess, I hear Dr. Devlin's going to be performing surgery. I'd like to assist if Dr. I could. Dr. Wexler is going to assist. But she's exhausted. She just lost her first patient. You know, I mean, I know how taxing that can be. Dr. Ramsey, your altruism is commendable. But Dr. Wexler has the assignment. Hmm. Losing your touch, Machiavelli. Oh, come on, look at her. She's beat. I'm just looking out for her best interests, not to mention the hospitals. Oh, poor baby. Well, why don't you just go uh, kiss Dr. Devlin for luck? I want you in the OR. Uh, now, to observe Devlin in action. <clears throat> He's the best there is. Um, okay. Now listen, this is important. Kevin's IV has to be kept TKO and his head elevated at all times. Absolutely, of course. Karen? Yeah? Answer me truthfully, because a life, not to mention your career, could depend on it. Are you up to this? Look, just because Chris says that I'm tired doesn't I mean I make that I'm... my own observations without assistance from Dr. Ramsey. Now, I ask you a question. I am 100%. Good. That's what I expected to hear from you. But you already knew that. Kevin will be intubated, hyperventilated, and given prophylactic antibiotics. During the procedure, he will be EEG monitored. The hematoma will be evacuated and cauterized, then the skull replaced. He'll go into ICU for neuromonitoring all night, and a repeat CT in the morning. Now, you ready to impress the big doctor? I betcha. Thank you for that vote of confidence. I have confidence in all my interns. Pressure brings out the best in them. Make me look good in there. I will. You and I are going to have a big powwow. Sure. Anytime. I 
I was completely alone. I had no family, no friends, no money. I was at the bottom. And then all of a sudden I have this uncle. Rex. I guess I was pretty naive, huh? So where's the feeling of belonging translated into kidnapping? She was my niece being raised by an abusive, drunken father. That is what Rex told me. Look, Scott had my niece, my father's money, my inheritance. Jake, I came from a place where I thought and felt that I was a product of a one-night stand to being Danielle Stanton. By the time I'd taken Serena and found out that Rex was lying, God, it was too late. That's for sure. I am so ashamed for everything that I have done. And I don't expect you to believe me, but it's the truth. I feel like I, I never even knew right from wrong before we met. I was so screwed up, but I have changed. Then help me. Help me. Danielle, please. I'm out of here. Wait, wait. I have to say something. What? That I still love you. I won't say it again because I know that you hate to hear it. But it is the truth. It's irrelevant, okay? I'm trying to stop Rex from hurting someone else. Okay, look, you still want me to go back with you? Well, I need your cooperation. Look, it's not gonna be easy. But if there's anyone who can stop Rex, it's you. Dr. Collins, you are definitely going to need a much better security system as long as I'm in town. Let me just get this. 30 degree max, doctor. Ooh, well, mind the commentary, doctor, please. Sorry, doctor. Okay. Oh, you've been nipping at your own sauce again. No, I'm fine. Uh, Dr. Devlin, excuse me for asking this, but you have done this sort of procedure before, right? Want to see my diploma? Uh, no, sorry. I, I guess I'm just looking for reassurances. Well, as brain surgeries go, it's a very, very basic procedure. Uh, as soon as the pressure's relieved, your fiancé should recover quickly and fully. Oh, quickly's good. And fully is music to my ears. You see, my fiancé happens to be a very brilliant man, and if anything happened to change that, I don't, I don't know what that would do to him. And well, if anything happened to him, I don't know what that would do to me. Nothing is going to happen. You're too good a doctor, right? All procedures carry some risks. In this case, they're minimal. Dr. Deflin, the x-rays have come in. Risk? What, what do you mean, risk? What, what kind of risks? You'll be fine. Well, what do you think he meant by that? What do you, what do you mean, risk? Scott, what does he mean? He's just playing this God act, that's all. Do you really think that's it? What? Strange feeling. Something's not quite right. You have never used the word divorce, but I don't think we can keep avoiding it. I know you met Fran when you came to San Francisco. What Fran said was true. We have been seeing each other for a while. Whoa. Well, that's why Karen's been so upset. Old Hubby's been a very, very bad boy. Being with Fran wasn't something I planned for. What are you doing? Please just tell me that Kevin is going to be all right. Um, I don't want to diminish the seriousness of the injury, but the fact that we caught it early bodes well for him. As soon as we get the swelling down, we'll get him into surgery. I've had great success with this procedure. Good. Uh, what about complications? Well, given that the injury is in the cerebellar region, my main concern is that his vision could be permanently affected. Oh, no. 
He also uh, could have some problems with coordination and balance. I'm sure he'll come through with flying colors. God, please make him be all right. I do hope you enjoyed it while it lasted, because pretty soon you won't remember what it's like to enjoy anything. <laughs> oh, isn't that sweet? Now, if I were you, Scotty... Perish the thought. <laughs> Where would I keep my briefcase? Hmm. How about over here? Huh? Am I getting warmer? No oh, quaint. Oh, my. What have we here? Scott Baldwin, attorney at large. Bingo. No. Uh, where else would the attache case of a prominent lawyer turned carpenter be found? Hmm? Uh, what do we have? Oh, my, 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 my. So this is how you spend your valuable time, huh? Playing Tetris. Why am I not surprised? What other surprises? I give permission for my daughter to attend a performance of Pinocchio on Sunday. <laughs> Sweet. Parent or guardian, sign on the dotted line. Self-addressed envelope to the school. Well, you better get cracking here, Mr. Baldwin, and get this in the mail. ASAP, we don't want her to be denied. Pinocchio, do we? Ah, a little dab will do you. One lick of this envelope, and it's psycho time. just for safety's sake, huh? Better safe than sorry. Say, Scott, tell me, have you ever noticed how those child custody judges just hate demented fathers, huh? <laughs> you better start packing your bags, pal, because you're about to move from the lighthouse to the nuthouse. <clears throat> doing? He's good. He's a little upset he missed the Jets game, but uh, he wants to go home. I think his doctors might have something to say about that. Oh, I don't know about that. I mean, what doctor would want Frank as a patient, huh? Yeah. Well, I'm glad he's doing better. You know, I was, um, I was really worried about him. 
Me too. But uh, thank you for sticking with me through it. Nah, no sweat. No, listen, I mean it. I mean, you're a great pal. Well, you know, I wasn't the only one helping out there, pal. You mean Karen? I just, I felt guilty leaning on her. I mean, she's had so much emotional stuff to deal with this past week. I just, I was afraid she might keel over. I found it on the floor. You took it out of my pocket. I was going to give it back. Oh, right. After you read it a couple of times, I can't believe you did this. I didn't read all of it, okay? Oh, that makes it better. Just calm down. Don't you tell me to calm down, Chris. I know what kind of a jerk you really are. I get to observe Devlin, so you have to start paying me back. Wait a minute. What are, what are you? are paranoid. I'm not paranoid. You take my letter. I'm paranoid. Look, I explained. I didn't explain. You lied. You know, I can understand why you have trouble believing me since you just found out your husband is a lying cheat. You son of a... What's going on here? It's personal. Well, then it doesn't belong at the hospital. Take it somewhere else. Dr. Wexler, go to the OR, find out what's taking so long. Right. If another intern could observe, I'd like the opportunity to... I don't like working in a crowded room. But maybe... Dr. Wexler is assisting. Dr. Ramsey, see if the rest of Frank Scanlon's tests are back. I want to get this operation underway. I hate standing around. While the patient is being prepped, you can distract yourself by checking on the interns. Can I help you with something? Actually, I was just about to ask you the same question. Well, I think we have everything under control here. My name's Ben. What's yours? Anthony. How's the leg, Anthony? It hurts a lot. Yeah? I tell you, Dr. Lambert here is going to fix you up quicker than you can say, Obi-Wan Kenobi. Hey, you want to listen to some music? I carry a Walkman in my pocket. It comes in handy during surgery. Here you go. First time suturing a kid. Yeah. Go ahead, you'll do fine. I am just going to put the cut to sleep. You're going to feel a little sting, and then I promise it won't hurt anymore, okay? Dr. Is there anything I can do? Waiting. This waiting is so hard. I know. I know. I can't live without him, pal. I just, I can't. Oh, uh, Dr. Burgess? Could I, could I see Kevin now? We've got to stabilize him first. Well, how long will that take? Give them 15 minutes. They're busy getting pre-op blood work and starting an IV. Libra no sabig ni vos que hene. Kitty, and then we'll get your toothbrush and a change of clothes and a pair of pajamas. How many nights am I staying with you, Grandma? Just tonight, so that Daddy can stay at the hospital with Kevin and Lucy. And we are going to have such fun. Have you ever made caramel apples? No. Grandma, somebody's been here. What do you mean, sweetheart? See the picture of me and Daddy? That's not where it goes. Daddy always has it in the same exact place, so Daddy can see it from his chair when he's working. 
Well, maybe Lucy moved it. I don't think so. I'll, I'll ask her, and if she did, then I will remind her to leave that picture just where your daddy likes it. Uh, you know, we better go because uh, Grandpa is waiting in the car. So let's go upstairs and get the dirty kitty and all your things. That's right, Granny. Hurry up and get little Miss Sharp Eyes out of here. Great job. I'm here to check on the patient. Great, he's all yours. Anthony, we're finished. Okay. All right. Thanks for letting me use this, Ben. You're very welcome, Anthony. You're one brave kid. Yeah, it won't scar too much. Uh, Dr. Lambert stitched it up better than new. Great. Thanks for the compliment. Well, I said you'd be a great surgeon. Glenn used on me in med school. I noticed your mind before I noticed anything else. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, it works both ways here. Ever since we broke up, you've been treating me like the devil incarnate. And uh, let me remind you, you are not the only injured party here. You told me you were going to leave your wife. I was. And? And I um, couldn't bring myself to hurt her. But it doesn't mean that I loved you any less. There was a time I would have believed you, Ben. That time is long gone. I'm sorry I stormed out of the restaurant. I don't always think straight when I'm around you. Okay. All right, Ben, spill it. What? You're laying it on with a spatula. What do you want? No, nothing. I just, it was nice watching you work on the boy. You know, and, and, and the two of us being together without you trying to tear me limb from limb? Well, you were on your best behavior. Okay, I shouldn't have asked you to leave General Hospital. <laughs> asked me? You threatened me. You said you'd use your influence to get me kicked you, out. You leapt to that conclusion, just like you assumed that I wanted you out of Port Charles so I, my daughter wouldn't know about us. Well, why the hell else would you want to force me out? Did it ever occur to you that it might be because it's difficult for me being around you? Don't do this to me, Ben. You are free to go any time you want. No. You live with my daughter. I cannot avoid you. And every time I'm with you, I find myself thinking... Excuse me. Hi. I mean to interrupt. You left that stuffed animal that Serena gave you in the truck. I don't want her to think that you didn't like it. Oh, no. Uh, you know what? I'll just go get it. Uh, so I put it in the on-call room. Thanks. Yeah. Tell Serena how grateful I am. I will. So long. So that's why you've been keeping me at arm length. Phone for the ambulance chase. Scott and I are friends, nothing else. Isn't uh, that the friend that gave you a ride back from the restaurant the other night? Are you jealous? Uh, no comment. Did you tell him about us? <laughs> it's not exactly my favorite topic of conversation. Uh. Neither one of us have much to benefit from having our past revealed. You know, I like this new soft cell approach of yours. It's much better than the Mack truck one. And I like to see you smile. <laughs> don't get me wrong. I still don't believe a word you say. Eve. I think you have a patient waiting. Oh, hi. Can, can I see him? Can I see him before surgery? Uh, yes. Just oh. Okay, so, how do I do this? You're gonna be fine. Hey. Hey, hi. I get to go into surgery with Ben and Devlin. He's a jerk, but he's the best. Whatever, just make him look good. Okay. I heard you're going in with Devlin? Yeah, if I don't fall apart first. Oh, well, good luck. Thanks. Thanks, Joe.
was uh, Devlin, the one you had dinner with? Hey, it's me, the person who loves you the most in the whole wide world. Listen, enough of this scary stuff, okay? I'm really tired of it. I'm over it big time. I'm ready for a nice, kind of boring life. You've got to get better so we can go home. Start living that future that we planned together, okay? Doc, you got to get better. Because I can't live my life unless you're at the center of it. Oh my God, help! Somebody, somebody help! I don't know, the machine just started going crazy. Sailing is dry. This is wide open, who did this? What, what, what do you mean? So I need help in here now! Somebody moved the picture and Lucy wouldn't do it. Well, maybe somebody was just dusting and forgot to put it back. Maybe. One smart child you have there, Scott. Oh, let me amend that. One smart child you had. Because one little taste of Uncle Rex's special elixir, and you will be waving bye-bye to Serena and all the accoutrements that go along with her. Do it. I would say that is one case. It is closed. Yes, Counselor. It's been a real pleasure doing business with you. What did he do to you in there? Watch me stitch up a kid. You okay? I told you I hate it when you're nice to me. Where's Dr. Devlin? Something's wrong with Kevin. Where is he? What's going on here? Hey, Kevin Do Collins, his IV was wide open. He should have been set at TKO. He got over a liter of fluid. Did you slow it down? Yeah, I did. I started him on 100% O2, uh, 10 milligrams dexamethasone, IV push, and a mannitol drip. Who set the IV? Andrews works. Did you start Kevin Collins' IV? Yes, is there a problem? It was you? I don't understand. Thanks to your incompetence, the patient's neurological status is in danger. You have compromised the surgery. You call the OR, find out when the damn room is open. You are not to set foot in that surgery. Is that understood? Yes, I'll go find another answer. Who you got? Excuse me, I'm, I'm available. Let's go scrub. Are you okay? Yes, go take care of Lucy. I'm, I'm fine. All right, I'll check with you later. Okay. Karen. I know how you feel. No, you don't. That line was TKO. I don't know who opened it, but I did not. He has to make it Scott. He just has to. 